The first step in fabricating a pork rack into pork chops is finding this little piece of meat, this eye, which I'm pointing at right here, and there's also one on the other side. You want to cut a guideline from eye to eye, and you always want to cut your guideline below the eye. If you cut all the way above the eye, what's going to happen is you're going to have uh, pieces of meat that aren't going to stick to the bone properly. Next, you simply flex your knife down along those pork bones, and you're going to remove that little piece of fat. Now, this is optional. This is just to French down the bones. Now, if you want, you could actually just skip right ahead and cut your pork chops. But if you want to French, you first remove that little outer portion, and you're going to cut down in between the bones, as shown here, removing those little pieces of meat from the inside of the bone. Now, all this scrap that you're cutting away, it should not go into the trash. You can save this, put it aside, and uh, use it the next time you're going to be making sausage. A little bit of uh, ground pork goes great with any sort of sausage mix you'll be making. Now, the next step is actually fabricate your pork chops. And it depends on if you're going to do a double cut or single cut. Now, see how that bone at the end is just kind of hanging off in the middle of nowhere? I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to start with my first pork chop right there giving me a nice double cut pork chop. Now the whole idea is you want to cut each chop to the same thickness and being able to lose a bone here or there is going to allow you to give a nice thick pork chop for every single serving. Now again, because of the bone structure, I cut a double pork chop right there and later I'm going to go, go back and remove one of those bones. I'm going to work my way all the way down the pork rack and each time I'm going to be flexing my knife towards the nearest bone and using that as a guide. Now I'm going to go back and grab those double cut pork chops. The one on the end is always the VIP. That's going to be the big fat guy. Uh, you have one small little chine bone at the end there that you want to make sure that you remove. Uh, you don't want to ever serve that because someone could easily bite into that. Now you want to go back and grab uh, all the double cut pork chops and just by running your knife along the inside edge of one of those bones, you're going to easily remove it uh, making a single cut. Now there's nothing wrong with having two bones attached. Uh, just to make things look a little bit more consistent, uh, you always want to remove one of the bones. So even though it's a technically a double cut pork chop, that single bone is going to be much more visually appealing. Now next, since I won't be actually making sausage today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all that scrap that I saved from trimming down the pork rack, and I'm going to wrap it nice and tight in plastic wrap and then foil. I'll place this in the freezer, and the nice tight plastic wrap plus the foil is going to uh, help to make sure that it doesn't get freezer burn. And that way I can pull it out later, thaw it, and add it to my grind for the next batch of Italian sausage that I make.